I like it. I like it. That is good. I can see the soul. I can see the flavor in it. If you like Thai food and you're in New York City, you have to come to Bangla. There's always this notion that Thai food outside of the Asian area is not that authentic. Well, times are changing. We're here with hip hop artist Wei from the famous Thai rap group Titanium. He's gonna walk us through his favorite hole in the wall restaurant that reminds him of Bangkok. Then we'll hit up one of the hottest Thai seafood restaurants in America. All right, so our first spot on this Thai crawl is in East Harlem. We're outside of a spot called Banglin. And I gotta say, this is the most artistic, interesting, hole in the wall Thai spot I've ever been to in my life. Wei, can you shed a little bit more light on this spot? So this spot has been open for like four years. I've known the cook for over 20 years. We used to work together back in the day. And now he opened a spot here in East Harlem, man. And, and it's and like what, a mom and pop spot. It's what like, makes it special, man? It's a one man show. He sells clothes, vintage. He cooks, he takes the order. Come as you are, order whatever you like. Guys, you have to check this out. Banglin, let's go. About my food, maybe I compare to the music because uh, I always enjoy to the subculture. You know, for the mainstream culture, I guarantee you know the singer, but you never know the song. You feel like you know it, but you don't really know it. You feel like you don't know it, but actually you know it. You know, something is similar, something is in your mind, something is in your soul. I always tell you, you're feeling it. When you're eating and after you're eating, how you feel, that more matter. 30 minutes when you walk out. For me, the best way to communicate, like, you know, we look at each other and then without talking, you can see, you can feel. You know. All right, everybody, we got the spread here at Banglin. Pat cooked everything himself, so you know you got the best chef, you got the owner cooking your food. This looks like dishes only I saw in Thailand. I have not seen these dishes at other Thai restaurants in New York City. This is probably my favorite. These two are my favorite. This okay. is la fish with like spring onions and yeah, it's like a salad, it's spicy. Uh -huh. That's like a curry, crab curry. This actually looks like the crab curry I had in Thailand. Yeah. And I went to this one spot and it was based off of Mark Ween's <laughs> recommendation. He's like this food guy, but that's the only last time I seen something that looked like that. This is not your suburban Thai express. Nah, no. <laughs> this is not even Manhattan this Thai. Is not, nah, this Harlem. This is not Harlem. any town <laughs> US say Thai Express, guys. I right. can see the soul, I can see the flavor in it. This is Thai soul food. Could you real quick break down just the main regions of Thai food? The Central Thailand, Bangkok food is more of the American Thai food that people know, right? Yeah, Those like, dishes. like the Pad Thai, or like basic Thai basil, kapow. But then there's like Isan, Northeastern. Right. You get like the grilled pork, the grilled chicken, the grilled beef. Right. Very close to Laos, right? Yeah, yeah, the papaya salad. Right, right, right. Then you have up north, where it's like khao soy, this noodle dish that's like, right, it's right. like egg noodles in this curry. You talking about Chiang Mai region? Yeah, Chiang Mai region. And then they have like Sai Ua, which is like the northern sausage. And then you have which, which one of my personal favorites is Southern Thai, which is like a lot of the curry. I heard Southern right. Thailand is very interesting because you may see a little bit more like Indio, Indian influence, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. We're joined today by uh, radio, radio, rapper in Thailand as well. Yo, you speak some Thai? A little bit. You know, Swati Kha. <laughs> Standard. <laughs> Southern fried chicken, guys. Let's check it out. I noticed with Thai fried chicken, the batter is very light. It's amazing that Pat was cooking all this stuff because like, there's a lot of different techniques. You know what's crazy? He was back there in the kitchen. I just saw him flipping a lot of pans and then out comes all of this. Fried fish larb right here. Very generous with like, was this cilantro, parsley? Mm -hmm. Look at that. I've never had a fried larb before. Man, that's good. Crab curry right here. Wow. Who would have thought, Andrew, that one of the best Thai restaurants I've ever been to was in Harlem? This is the crab fried rice. I know other crab fried rices out there, they're a lot more lighter in color, but this is this has got the flavor. Yo, all the food here has that street food flavor. Listen, if you guys like Thai food and you guys are used to going to all the big name Thai spots in East Village, definitely you owe it to yourself to come to Banglin here in East Harlem. My goodness, I'm so glad that you took us here, way, man. Yeah, man. Appreciate it. What I love about Pat is he sticks to his guns, man. Like he has his philosophies that he lives by. He was like, hey guys, I don't want to talk too much about the food before you eat it. Eat it first and then talk to me later. Ask me all the questions after you eat the food because the food will have explained a lot. Okay, for me, I loved everything here at Banglin. But since we got to pick favorites, I'm going to go with the chicken because I thought that that sauce was not how I expected, but it was even more sophisticated and elevated than I would have imagined. The crab curry is my favorite, man. This reminds me of something that I only had back in Bangkok. So I'm going with the uh, crab fried rice, man. And like you said, crab pieces were real, real chunky and the flavor was good. It was good, man. No, they, they get, I almost saw, I think I saw a whole oh, arm. <laughs> <laughs> 
I think it is an extremely unique experience here between the food and the quality and just even how it tastes and the flavors he's able to pack in. The fact that it's a one man show, I don't think there's any other Thai restaurant like it. But now we're about to head to our second spot, Fish Cheeks. And this spot is open pretty recently. It is a seafood focused Thai spot and it's very, very well known. If we could bust a little bit of a quick audible before we go there, where you were saying the oh, chopped yeah. cheese wouldn't have been on the street, right? We got, well, I mean, we're like four blocks away from Haji, so we need to get a chopped cheese because my man is visiting from, from the All right, area. can't wait to do it. So we're gonna go get a chopped cheese and then we're gonna head down to Fish Cheeks in Lower Manhattan. Let's go. All right, guys, we are outside of the world famous chopped cheese deli right now. They also call it Haji's, but as you can see, this is the place for chopped cheese. World famous chopped cheese. chopped cheese. Let's see what it's about, New York. Damn. Crispy sesame seed bread, juicy. This is good. This is the highest quality chopped cheese I've ever had. Yeah. You did that, man. All right, so we made it all the way down from East Harlem, and now we're in NoHo on Bond Street, and we're in front of Fish Cheeks, and Fish Cheeks is considered the best seafood Thai restaurant out there. Now, what, what does that mean? Because a lot of people, they're thinking, I know what Thai food is, I've had it in my hometown. You're like, hold on, no, there's a whole nother side. Well, we're in Harlem, I touched on all the different types of genre of Thai food, but I left out one is like seafood. Seafood, Thai seafood, it's its own thing. Like completely different dishes. They're completely different dishes. There's like a glass noodle with, that's in like a clay pot with shrimp. There's also, okay, the, 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 the crab curry, but then there's also the oysters, the raw oysters with this, um, the fried shallots. And, and you're saying that this seafood Thai genre is not something that the U.S. has had a lot of exposure yeah, to. No, it's different. It's, it's, it's same, same, but different. The number one Thai seafood restaurant, maybe in America, but for sure New York. Fish cheeks, let's go. Let's go. My partners grew up in Thailand, and these are kind of like the meals that your family kind of go out and like. What do you want? Then, what do you want to enjoy seafood? Right. We do oysters with like nam chim seafood sauce and fry shallots. So you know, like stuff like that. We can honestly say that we're the first Thai restaurant to be serving but raw they, oysters. But, aren't you guys? We are here at Fish Cheeks, dude. What did we start with, Way? All right. Right, oh, right, we're right. <laughs> one of these dishes you connect with this one. My wife, that's my wife's favorite dish. All right, so please give me some of these uh, chili paste clam. I like it. I like it. That is good. Mm -hmm. Do a fish cheeks. Wow. Right off the bat. Yo, let's go into this. Uh, let's do this pot. Man, this is crazy. That's good. To so moving on beyond the food, we still got more food coming up, but I got some questions for you, Wei. You guys were some of the first like Thai Americans to go back to Thailand and kind of like spark hip hop culture, right? I can say that. We were like titanium back in like 1999. Kind of brought hip hop, westernized hip hop to, uh, to Thailand. To, to Bangkok. Definitely to the mainstream, kind yeah. of blowing it up. It took a while, but yeah. Coming back now, how have you seen like the culture of Thai cuisine in America change? It's, I definitely think that in the past 20 years, a lot of people that are non-Thai have been to Thailand and definitely experienced Thai culture and the Thai food. And uh, you see that now with the restaurants opening everywhere. Like there's a lot of Thai restaurants back when I was living here, but now I see it every corner. Like back in the day, you would see like Chinese takeout. Now they have like Thai takeout right, right, right. Right, everywhere. Right, yeah. All of Asia kind of likes hip hop, mm -hmm. but I feel like in Thailand, it, it connects a little bit better. Thailand has this genre of music, which is Malam and Luk Tung. So Malam and Luk Tung is kind of like similar to hip hop and reggae. And these are like ancient. Yeah, this is like the, the local music, the way they sing it, the way right. they deliver it. It's so, kind of like they're already rapping and they're talking about their struggles, which is very hip hop. So every chance that we had when we did interviews, when like people were like, what is hip hop? Explain hip hop to like people who don't know in Thailand. They're like, it's very similar to Malam and and Luke Tung, that we're talking about our struggles, we're talking about our diaries, our personal diaries, right. but in the form of rap, which is very similar to the way that they deliver their music. Even though it's sped up, some of it's sped up, it has that 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 that, that <laughs> the beat. 
Mm -hmm. You know, so it's it's similar in, in that sense. And then now, now that hip hop is so big in Thailand, it's more localized now. Mm -hmm. And you know, there's there's people in like outside of Bangkok in the province, you know, doing their version, or maybe talking about uh, their struggles yeah, talking that about are their different than too. city people. Absolutely. Now that you're super established, you have a label and you're signing younger artists, where do you hope that rap, hip hop in Thailand, but also I guess greater Asia in general goes? Because it's still obviously probably several steps of yeah. rotations of development behind America. Right? Yeah, I, I definitely want you know to help develop new artists and you know help them accomplish their dreams. And then also bring the business aspect because music business is a business. And if they could live off of that and feed their families for you know generations and generations, I and if I could help be a part of that, then, you know, uh, I think, you know, I'm fulfilled. Green sauce, fried shallots. Never had fried shallots on an oyster before. Ooh. As a foreign artist in Asia, any sort of insight into, like, your whole experience or bringing the world together or just being something, obviously, that people wouldn't expect to see in America, they might not expect to see it, see it in Asia either. What worked for me was like actually like intertwining with the culture, you know what I mean? Like understanding, not just trying to come over there like, oh, I'm, I'm the only black dude out here, let me be the best rapper. Like, no, like, let me understand what they're doing, let me study the culture, let me study the music, you know what I mean? And, and the people. So that, that to me, that's the biggest thing. Like, you gotta come in with like an open mind and, and, and the mindset to like, you know, like I need to network and I need to build versus just let me just take. Last time I filmed a video with Wei was back in Bangkok in 2017. It's so dope that we got to reconnect back in New York. And now I got to show you a few more authentic Thai spots around the city that are really popping up. All right, you guys, continuing our Thai crawl of new concepts throughout New York City, Andrew. We are in Lil Chef Mama in Phi Dai, which is not a neighborhood really known for Asian food. And they are serving authentic Thai snacks that are pretty rare to find. Yeah, man, I mean, I think, so the chef and the owner are from Bangkok, but you know, I think, in the past, being from Bangkok meant that you were just gonna serve Pat Siu and Pad Thai, which they do have on the menu for the lunch crowd because you know they are catering to the business crowd. But man, they got some deep cut snacks and street food here. They have these mini dumplings, they have the shrimp cakes, they have the chive cakes, they have these limited edition curry puffs. You're not gonna find these at your average Pad Thai spot in the suburbs. No, and to have it in financial district means that there is a change. People want the deep cut Thai food. This is a papaya salad, Andrew, that is uh, with salted egg yolk. So this has a really, really strong, unique flavor right now. So I know up. that in Thailand, Malaysia, Singapore, the salted egg yolk craze has been booming yes. for the last like five years. Um, I love eating my papaya salad with almost any other Thai dish. I think it's just like a great kind of like accompaniment. I know that in Thailand, they like salted egg yolk so much, they'll put it on anything. Papaya salad with egg yolk. Got that little bit of saltiness, I like it. That's not really a flavor a lot of people expect to find in the financial district right next to Wall Street. So David, they actually only make a limited amount of these per day, so they sell out early. So I'm glad we came here for lunch. Yo, a lot of people serve this chives cake, but this is a more authentic version of this snack. Mm. Yo, that's the best chive cake I've had in New York City. Whoa. That is delicious. Yo, yeah. shout out to other Thai restaurants, but your chai cake is not as good as this. Yeah, I think we gotta go in on this next because this just flew out fresh out the steamer. So I will mm. compare it to the dim sum dish that you can get called ha churn, which is like the shrimp churn fun, the rice roll. But that's pretty good. It's got a little extra kick. Next up, we've got the Thai snack shrimp fritters. I actually never had this dish in this format. I think other places serve this, but not in this circular traditional way. Surprisingly good. I didn't know, I didn't expect much from that, but that is actually got a lot of shrimp flavor. David, coming up, we have these mini Thai dumplings, which almost look like mini Thai pelmenis. They are literally miniature dumplings, so it's very interesting to know how they wrap them. <clears throat> this was a lot of work. Somebody had to wrap every single one of these by hand, guys. There's no machine that can do this. They really taste like miniature pot stickers. Yeah. So this is actually a popular way to eat the muya, which is the grilled pork and they kind of made it into a slider form, kind of like a uh, Thai bun mi. Do you think it's interesting that in Thailand in 2021, you're finding so many fusion dishes because obviously they have so much interaction with the West? Yeah, I mean, they have such a big uh, stress on tourism. So of course they're gonna come up with new dishes and I think that is what's yeah. cool about it. So they told us, obviously this is not a traditional Thai dish from a hundred years ago, but you can find this in Bangkok right now in 2021. 
Andrew, you have been to Bangkok. I have not, but I had no idea there were this many subgenres to the Thai cuisine. And Wei was explaining it. They have like a congee cuisine that they eat only when they're hung over at like 4 a.m. on the street outside of the club with a bunch of different accoutrements. And I was like, man, the food culture goes deep in Thailand, much deeper than I originally had thought. Man, it just goes to show you that Thailand, even though it, it's a decently sized country, but it has such a crazy diverse like cuisine. And I think that that's something that people really need to realize. And now in 2021, I do think people are demanding some of those regional dishes to come over here and you know, something that you might wanna eat for lunch even. Most people in America have only been exposed to Pad Thai and Thai tea. But once you get to know actual Thai people, it's clear that they have a very unique way of life and philosophy that carries over into their cuisine. Wei is an Asian American who built a successful hip hop and acting career, bridging the gap between NYC and Bangkok and all around Asia. It wasn't easy and it took a lot of sacrifice, hard work, and self-belief. But maybe if more Asian Americans could do this, the chasm between the East and the West could feel a little bit smaller and a little bit warmer.